Hello, welcome to another history lesson with me, Mrs. Allen. This is your guide to cause and consequence, which is a really important skill in history. Now, often in history, we describe you as detectives because you're looking for clues to understand why an event happened. Now, this is only half true. Yes, you are a detective, but you are also interested in what happened after the event, which is what we call the consequence. To help us to understand cause and consequence, I'm going to be looking at the theme of warfare. Despite the events being in different time periods, we see similarities in their causes and consequences. The most important thing to understand when looking at cause and consequence is that they can be categorised into short term and long term. The analogy that I like to use is the boiling pot of water. The long term causes are those that start long before the event that bubble underneath the surface. They cause movement, but nothing that cause great concern. The short-term causes are those events that happen closer to our main event happening. Those are the ones that cause the boiling pot of water to really spit out, bubble violently, and eventually boil over the top. This is when the main event happens. We also use long and short when categorising the consequences. Short-term consequences happen immediately after the event, like the execution of Charles, and long-term consequences are those changes that happen more gradually. An example would be the formation of Parliament as we know it today. Once you have organised your causes and consequences into long-term and short-term, it's important to categorise them. Economic, so anything to do with money. Political, so concerning who's in charge and the laws. Religious, and then finally, social. So this just means anything to do with society as a whole. For those who really want to stretch themselves, you could also consider ideological causes and consequences. This is about ideas and beliefs. So let's now apply this to our theme of warfare. Firstly, let's look at some causes. I recommend now pausing the video, having a look through and seeing if you can work out which of these would be short term and which of these would be long term. Due to the nature of warfare, economic and political causes are always going to be important. In comparison, when looking at the consequences of war, we tend to look at the social and ideological impact. When looking at the First World War, we consider the 8 million soldiers who died and 9 million civilians, the homes and factories that were destroyed and how it led to the rise of Adolf Hitler as a result of the Treaty of Versailles created to punish Germany for their involvement in the First World War. When looking at the consequences of the Vietnam War, it's important to consider all factors. However, we can see once again that social factors are most prominent. Vietnamese infrastructure was destroyed, there were psychological after effects, thousands massacred in Vietnam and 58,000 Americans died. It also had an impact on the civil rights movement in America. Time for you to do a bit more research to find out whether these were long-term or short-term consequences. Your challenge now is to look at the causes and consequences of these wars in more depth. Good luck. 